We're going to have guys on the inside probably f until at least five. Then I also have tomorrow, I have door guys coming in, trim guys coming in, the plumbers, I have towel guys coming in. This is the probably the hardest job you're ever going to be on because we continuously will have to work around each other. It ain't worked out the way it was supposed to work out. I was promised an empty house. As you see, I ain't got an empty house. Don't so we need to work with Tony so he can get his tooling done first. Yeah, like that, yeah just talk to me about it. You know, these guys aren't probably used to that. They're not used to working on top of each other. Usually when drywallers come in, it's them. They're in there. They're the guys that, they're the only guys in that house. It'd be real easy to just tell everybody to go home and we'll come back tomorrow. But it ain't gonna be no better tomorrow. So might as well just get it done. That's how you tape a place in a day. Yep. Teamwork. Best you guys are awesome. We use mold resistant drywall, and this is a little rougher, this type, so it, it really shows the seams for where the tape is. We're gonna do a level five finish, which means we're gonna roll on the plaster, we're gonna trowel it off, and it's actually worth the effort. It's just a perfect finish. I love it. Roll the mud on the wall, trowel it off afterwards, and we've got a 100% smooth finish. Awesome. Here we have a wonderful new subdivision, a lot of adjoining homes. The complaint is, I can hear my neighbor. I can hear them talking. I can hear them playing their music. I can hear the TV. I can hear them in their bedroom. I can just remember when they started moving in, my heart just sank. I couldn't believe that I just bought a house and I could hear them so clearly. Yeah, I, I definitely hear things. I, I hear. Uh, mostly in my bedroom and uh, in the kitchen. This will tell us how much sound that the wall is not absorbing right. or, or taking over. This is supposed to be a minimum 50 STCs. That's correct. Well, let's see what we have. Okay. You go ahead. Yeah, I'm almost here. Okay, I'm here, Mike. Okay, here we go. Okay, did you get that? Yeah, we got about uh, 47 to uh, 49. Sometimes we even hit 50. The wall's supposed to be stopping about 46 STCs. And we had, I believe, about uh, 80 on the other side, 85. So we're shy on what we should be getting for a staggered wall. That's correct. Okay, now this is the drywall you're talking about. This stuff here will be the equivalent of eight layers of drywall. That's correct. When the NRC tested this, that's what their uh, comments were, acoustically speaking. And uh, the trick here is not the actual metal that's inside, but it's the polymer, the viscoelastic polymer that's on both sides of it, which actually convert acoustic energy into heat, which you can't hear, and nor could you feel that. If I use this... That's correct. I'm going to stop really the high frequencies, but not necessarily the low frequencies. That's correct. The screaming, the yelling, the phones ringing, things of that nature. And any kind of bass that happens that's on a low decibel level, you'll get rid of that. This is a sound wrap. This will stick to all surfaces. It seals right around the wire. It's almost like uh, putty. And now what we've done is deadened all sound that can travel through that box. We know we've made the repairs on this area. We did use a piece of quiet rock. It was not necessary, but we had it, so why not use it? Now, let's understand the structure for a second. This wall here is a load-bearing wall, which continues right up. This is an adjoining house. This wall is also a load-bearing wall. So picture two studded walls that go directly up, and now instead of overlaying our floor joists and tying in over the load-bearing wall, We've separated this, and what we do by doing that is stopping the floor joist so that we have that space in between. We need that dead air space, which you see across here, which now when sound will travel through the drywall, hit the stud, now dissipates in between the two areas because it's got nowhere to go. Very important. You know one thing, you got to know the next to do it all right. You do one thing wrong, we have a sound issue, and someone's going to scream. How you doing today? I'm doing great. Glad to see you back. I guess you can tell we've uh, opened this all the way up, pulled down the drywall. We uh, insulated that area, closed it off, and then insulated the whole wall and then put up the quiet rock. And uh, obviously, it's starting to look like we've never been here. Well, it looks like you weren't here at all. 
Yeah, so, we so. Re are we ready to do a sound test again? I think we should be, yeah, absolutely. How is it? Do you have it on? Can't hear it. No, it's not reading anything on this side over here, except when I'm talking. So we were good? We were great. Obviously, you know you're not going to see one hell of a difference, really, because we've chosen the same paint. Uh, we took it all down. So, you know what? Honestly, it looks the same. Can't even tell, can you? No. No, not even. Same, uh, looks the same. It isn't about what we see, it's about what we don't hear. That's the difference. To have the inspector come in and not notice that we don't have a proper fire stop in between the houses, like you just don't want, I can see next door. Now if I can clearly see that, how come nobody else did? Look at this. Come here. What do you see? The other house completely? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't like that you don't have a proper fire stop from this house to the next door house. Because the floor joists run through, that fire can continue through. When you're looking at a fire stop, this just stop it long enough for the fire department to possibly come in and stop it here. But if it can quickly and easily go next door, they're on fire. I've got a really bad feeling we're gonna be opening up quite a bit in this house. What we're gonna have to do, unfortunately, is remove everything that's already existing here. As you can see, this plate here these studs here are on our side of the house. This wall here is the neighbor's side. I'm gonna have to frame the neighbor's side, which is actually helping him at this point. I'm gonna frame it 16 inch on center. I'm then gonna add rock saw insulation, which is a fire resistance as well. This is actually a fire grade caulking. Oxygen feeds a fire. And by cutting off any access oxygen has to that fire, we're stopping it and keeping it from spreading between two houses. I've never drywalled one wall so many times in my life. But this is what you have to do for fireproofing. At the other end, we had a double wall. We were able to put a firewall in between the two walls. This time, at this end of the house, we have a two by four wall. That means double five eighths, but it doesn't stop there. We had a jog in the wall. I want to build that out with a quarter inch. So we've used quarter inch drywall in between the two 5 eighths drywall that I need by code for fire stop to add in between. So that means three layers of drywall on this one wall. Last sheets are going up now. It looks, looks great. Awesome. It's kind of surreal coming in and, and knowing that there's been a lot of work done and not seeing a lot of changes. But knowing that everything underneath that was wrong is fixed is just awesome. We're so thankful.